A job that often comes up is replacing the oil seal in the front of the bevel box. And this one that I've got out of a vehicle at the moment to do the chain drive conversion on has got a bit of a weep from that oil seal. So I thought it opportune to do a little video and show you something of how to get that oil seal out and change it. The first thing is it is very difficult to hold this bevel box with any degree of rigidity while you undo the nut. You'll see that the technique I've used is to bolt it down on the milling machine and then I've used milling machine clamps just to put a single bolt through one of the flange holes there, it's an M8 bolt and that stops the thing from turning and the other thing you should note is that's a 32 millimeter nut on there it has two tiny tabs you can see one there and one underneath down there on the other side which you have to pop out with a chisel before you can undo it and most importantly it is a left-handed thread so this left-handed thread is also um, held on with Loctite so you may need to put a little bit of heat on there don't do too much because you don't want to damage that uh, seal on the inside any more than necessary and uh, my advice is you will need a three-quarter inch socket set in order to get that undone the half inch socket will not be strong enough having removed the flange it pulled off quite easily I'm somewhat dismayed to see that although there is in here a nice shaft seal that the seal on the area where the splines go into the middle of the flange is achieved again rather like the crankshaft on the back of the engine with silicon sealer I really don't see the point I shall do some investigation and I suspect that in very short order we will be machining the back of that flange to accept an o-ring now that we have the flange removed from the input shaft of the bevel box we can look up inside and if I shine a light there you can see that shiny ring is the face of the bearing in which the shaft runs and the output flange pushes up against that bearing face and unfortunately the splines go into the front edge of that bearing and so there is very little hope of being able to put an o-ring in the end of the flange to try and get it to seal so we'll have to try and think of some other measures to prolong the life of the sealing in this situation with the flange mounted up in the lathe we can now quite clearly see here a ring which has been polished by the oil seal and if we run a fingernail across that surface you can actually feel although they're very fine you can feel the turning grooves in there and polishing that surface is what has actually worn out the sharp edge on the rubber seal I'll try and show you in a minute the rubber seal with, with the flat edge that is now on it which is why it leaks what I'm going to do with this up in the lathe is just quickly polish that area where the seal runs so that when we put the new seal in hopefully the sharp edge on it will survive a bit longer and there we can see that whole area which has now been polished with 1800 grit abrasive cloth and that will give us a much better life out of the new seal okay if we look now at the old seal we can see here if I can hold my hand still enough there is a very definite flat which has been worn on there by the rough surface of the shaft we can look now at a new seal and hopefully you can see on the new one here 
is a very sharp edge which is what's needed in order to create that seal so that flat that's worn on this old one has done two things it's released the pressure which is available sealing against the shaft because it is wider and presenting a bigger area bigger contact area and it's also of course made the inside diameter of the seal somewhat larger so it doesn't uh, doesn't press as hard on the shaft and that's why so many of these things fail so removing the old bevel box oil seal is fairly easy they're not difficult to get out I just conveniently happen to have an old aluminium bolt here with a nice round head on it which just pops in the back there I use aluminium because then it won't damage the splines that I'm levering against but you'll see that seal's very easy to get out. The new ones, I've oiled this so I'll wipe a bit off so you can see it. Some of the new SKF seals have all these little ridges around the outside. Now I've always been in the habit when fitting the old type seal which is just a plain rubber outer by turning up a wooden block with a good flat face on it and a hole in the middle that fits nicely over the shaft to centralise it and just tap them in with a mallet that sadly doesn't work on these ones with the ridges around the outside all the tapping in the world won't get it in they just bounce out again so the best thing is just to wipe a little bit of oil around there you just oil up the outside of the seal to make it slide more easily And with care, perseverance and strong thumbs, you can push it in. I'm now going to fit the newly polished boss on the back again with a little bit of oil on it. newly polished boss there fits in nicely I find the sealing of this shaft around the splines all rather hit and miss but there is absolutely no other way you can fit anything like an o-ring in there because of the way it's designed so I've left the uh, the old mastic, it's not, not actually a mastic it's a sort of paste that I presume Quaife have put in there I'm just going to quickly degrease the area and then I'm using something called marine mastic which is a polyurethane adhesive and sealant all in one I'm just going to put a bead of it around there not too much we don't want it going all over the place just enough to stop any oil from escaping under that nut I'm not going to use Loctite on here because the nut has perfectly adequate locking devices on it Now going to fit a blocking device on there while I fully tighten it. If you don't have a convenient milling machine handy you're going to find this a very difficult task because that gearbox isn't something you can easily get hold of and secure in any way. I can only suggest that if you've got a big vice on a bench that you put a steel bar in there with a couple of tapped holes or something and hold that in the vice but it is a very difficult thing, a difficult shape to hold carefully or hold securely. 
there we are, that's got that fully tightened. I'm now going to drive the locking tabs back in and that part of the job is done.